fully dressed in the frigid water and without flotation. Swim, Ranger. This event, they're going to have the life jacket off, so your true weak swimmers come out. For number 225, it's literally sink or swim. He's failed once already. This is his last try. Cold water robs the body of heat 30 times faster than cold air. Don't quit. Sudden immersion causes panic, impaired breathing, and numbness. Kick your feet, Ranger. Kick your feet. Don't quit, man. Hands become useless and thinking clouded. Okay. Let's go, Ranger. Walk the log. Let's go. For number 225, it's the end of the road. It'll be a drop from the course. I went underwater, tried to hold my breath and swim, but that disqualified me from the event, so... Disappointed because I came very far. At least I came far for, for myself. To get disqualified for that is uh, very disappointing. The students have been up for 16 hours and had only one meal. Now they head out on a 15-mile forced march with 60 pounds of combat equipment. Keep pace or you're out. We're looking for heart, just trying to make sure that they want to be here, that they have what it takes mentally to stay in the course. It's a drop event, so if he doesn't make it, he's out of the course. You cannot keep up with the man in front of you. Pull off this side and bring up the rear. Five miles down. Ten to go. So far, no dropouts. They've marched through the night into day three of Ranger School. They've been on the go for over 50 hours. These decks are really about four to six miles. are going to be pretty intense. The terrain now, we've gone from a hard concrete, blacktop road. Now we're walking on dirt. A lot of ditches out there. And we're also going to be going up some hills. And they're going to really start to feel it now uh, during this part of the course. And so we're going to really see who has the heart and who wants to be part of Ranger School. The forced march is one of the few individual events at Ranger School. Teamwork is usually a hallmark, but this is sheer endurance. Every man has to stand up to the punishment alone, and he gets just one chance. Come on, dude. Let's back up the holly. Watch his legs. Good. Put on your stuff. Let's go. Soldiers want to help if a man falls back, but falling back with him gets you kicked out. Suck it up. Stand up straight. There you are. The ranger instructors do what they can to motivate the men. Fall out, buddy. You're good. I hate yourself for it. Doing the buddy run, doing the obstacle course here the other day. Their legs are very fatigued. Some of these guys are sweating, probably didn't drink enough water, so their calories are burning up pretty quick here. Some of these guys are seriously giving themselves a gut check at this point. The temperature is 48 degrees and dropping. Soon, so will some of the men. They're fighting exhaustion, physical pain, and the worst enemy of all, self-doubt. Eight miles in, number 324 hits his breaking point. He was hurting probably about mile seven. He kept trying, finally fell more than 25 meters behind the, the uh, rear of the formation, so we had to pull him, put him on the truck. If they're gonna quit on themselves and quit on their buddies in this event just to walk out to camp, their mind's not in the game, to wanna to push themselves or their friends or their ranger buddies when the time is necessary. In battle, not giving up could be the difference between life and death for an entire platoon. Sit down. Just before sunrise, 232 soldiers finished the 15-mile night march. Three days of ranger assessment have forced out 106 men almost a third of the class. The attrition rate is right where the instructors want it. Bring in tight, man, bring in tight. I mean, over the past three days, you guys have been tested physically and mentally. Roger that. We've, uh, we've weeded out some weak and faint-hearted individuals, right? Right, sir. Well, I see only men standing before me. Who? 
Congratulations. Now Ranger School starts. It begins. They've made it this far, but they're not out of the woods yet. In fact, they're heading deeper into the woods, and not everyone will come out the other side. I need ammo! For the 232 Ranger students who made it through the grueling assessment phase, the next few weeks are spent in Camp Darby, a woodland area within Fort Benning. Go with the maneuver element, PL, because that's where you belong! Here, they'll learn specific skills in the art of war. Hey, somebody gonna pull security on that dead guy, because you don't know if he's dead or not. Here come they! Students run combat missions 20 hours a day and receive just enough calories to keep from passing out. Yeah. Uh, it's been uh, a little tough overall. Just getting legs conditioned with uh, Darby taking some food away from us and lack of nutrition. We limit their amount of food, we limit their amount of sleep. So as you'll see, they're, they're falling asleep on their feet while they're going through this course. It's an ongoing endurance test, but students know some tricks of the trade for staying awake. Some chew coffee grounds. Others go to extremes. Some people put Tabasco sauce in their eyes. I haven't tried that yet. After 20 days at Camp Darby, another 91 soldiers have been removed or quit. Heads up. Keep your heads up. 141 out of the original 338 students move on to the next phase. 20 days at Camp Merrill in the remote mountains of North Georgia. The terrain is torturous and brings on an entirely new form of stress. Nearly every war in history has included mountain operations. The purpose here is to conduct combat operations in mountainous terrain. The skills that they would need to conduct combat operations in a mountainous environment such as Afghanistan. Rangers must be comfortable in steep terrain, even with a heavy load. I got a 27.6 pound weapon up in front. Probably another 65, 70 pounds on my back. And maybe about 180 pounds with myself. So. Before combat operations begin, students get a crash course in military mountaineering. Each soldier must rappel 100 feet down a wet, vertical cliff, carrying an 80 pound pack. Hey, underneath your ass. So bring your feet down. Roster number 108 is fighting the laws of gravity and losing. Yep. Push up, ready? Push up. You gotta get out of it. Ain't nobody else gonna help you right now. You gotta do it yourself. Nobody else is gonna help you, Ranger. Nobody else is gonna help you right now. You gotta help yourself. Stand up. Come on, Ranger. Come on, Ranger. You gotta stand up. You have to. Stand up. Stand up. There you go. You did it. I slipped off the rock and my, uh, my rock pulled my weight backwards and fell down. I turned knees off the rock. One of the most scary parts, like, at the top, you had to trust your buddy to belay you down as you walk backwards down a vertical cliff. Get your hands off the rope, like seven. Hands off the rope. Lean back, you. Lean back. Some tension. In combat, your best asset is the man next to you. If Ranger School slams home one point, it's that your buddy will be there for you. And you better be there for him. This is a guy I trust the Ranger buddy. So, I do. I trust my Ranger buddy. Once they realize they don't have to think about it, it makes it easier on them. They gain confidence. And that confidence carries over to other events. Day 26. Eight more men have dropped out. 133 tired, hungry soldiers are still in Ranger School. Hey, where's uh, security at? Let's go. The instruction phase is over. Now combat operations begin. Over the next 10 days, each student will be put in charge of an operation. Mission success is graded go or no-go. Too many no-goes, and you're out of Ranger School. First up, Sergeant Eric Josephson is placed in command of a patrol. It's his turn in the hot seat. We rehearsed it a bunch of times, and uh, I don't know. Hopefully it turns out well. 
At 4 a.m., a Humvee will drive down a dirt road. The platoon must get in position and then ambush the vehicle using a precise set of tactics. It sounds simple, but a single missed step and the wrong people get killed. We try to recreate as much confusion, which we in the military we call the fog of war, to put the students in a state of uncertainty where they still have to make a decision in a stressful environment, accomplish a mission, and take care of the soldiers. Night falls, and the team gets ready. Look, just like that, make sure you are not seen on the objective. You're going to have to take a long way around. So Sergeant good. Josephson briefs his squad out. and moves out. Two star medic. The mission is on. In short order, they find the road and the ambush location. Look that you see the whole object. You guys flank to the right and then in, in caves. Got it. So far, so good. Josephson has all his men in place. Place them. The vehicle approaches the kill zone. On Josephson's signal, they attack. The Ranger instructor watches every detail through his night vision device. When he doesn't like what he sees, he gives Josephson an earful. Somebody better suppress the enemy! Rangers! You better get aggressive! This is the moment of truth. The instructor wants to see a clear command, and Josephson steps up. Let's go, man, let's go! Hurry up, man, move forward! The squad has to move with precise coordination to avoid hitting each other with friendly fire. In a matter of seconds, the enemy is neutralized. The ambush is successful, but it's not over. Josephson has to move his men out of the kill zone as quickly as he can enemy are in the area. Safely back in the woods, Josephson accounts for his men, and something is very wrong. How many people do you count with this arm? What's going on? I didn't get a good count. It's a ranger's worst nightmare. The count is wrong. That's not acceptable under any circumstances. The next thing you know, that guy's on CNN for Al Jazeera getting his damn head cut off. Day 44 of Army Ranger School, the mountain phase. After running a successful ambush, mission leader Sergeant Josephson is in hot water. His head count doesn't add up. It should be six total. You're on one side, the Alpha Team leader's on the other. Nobody knows for sure how many men they started with. Oh my God. Man, it should be just six guys. Now we can't figure out what happened amongst themselves. Uh, there was confusion about how many one squad leader was supposed to bring with him. Uh, I told him a certain number and he ended up bringing one extra guy. So when we left the wire, we had one extra person. He had uh, 14 Rangers as opposed to 13, he thought. That's sort of a big boo-boo. That's a real serious thing we take here. So what you're telling me is that if you went out here and you'd lost a man, or we'd hit an IED or gone to a massive firefight, you could have lost one man and went back and did a head count, been missing a guy out here and not know it. Then next thing you know, that guy's on CNN, or even worse, Al Jazeera getting his damn head cut off. You're not eating right. Sunlight, you're going to sleep no more than 15 minutes a night. You're hungry. It sucks. We've all been through the same course, or we wouldn't be here where we're at now today, Roger. Roger, Sergeant. Check it out. Head counts. Going outside the wire, not knowing how many people you got with you. That's not acceptable under any circumstances. It's a serious failure, and Josephson's grade.